This first poem invokes my muse. Psalm to a violin. Arm of my arm, body of my body, you wear your cracked skin, cradle, crook of elbow. Fold into me, your scroll my lid, your peg my bone, your bridge my tongue, you burn vowels, green vein, wound the skin. Treble strings, my gut, sing sotto voce, wound to taut pitch, blood quaver, pulsate, inner lobe. When all is spent, a frame of blue, who will have you when I am gone? Arm of my arm, blood of my blood, body of my body. How beautiful. We begin in autumn. Half harvest moon. Sunken heavy, you breathe October earth, reflect blush autumn, burnt orange mist. I understand how, weary of holding yourself aloft, you let the weight of you drop to almost touch the earth. Now, you straddle the horizon, recline with laconic grace, an invitation to swing the dark ether, or perhaps mount the boat of you to drift the echoing sea, never to return. Transfiguration. My father began to hallucinate, she said. He said, they are holding an investigation. His racked body crawled into a ball, she said. And then she said, his eyes shut. The night we kept vigil, he said nothing. His parched tongue craved moisture. The breath rattles grew further apart, slow, slower, then stopped. So this is death, she said. The air trembled. Did his body tremble too? Her eyes traced the lines of his face. Then a tear, one tear, traced a line of his face. Um, my father's death, which the last poem was born out of, moved me to teach the string instruments in the public schools on Long Island. And this next poem deals with the often contentious relationships I had with my school administrators, which you may be able to relate to, some of you. Mechanical doll. School principals, administrators, rejoice. It has arrived. Your very own mechanical doll. <laughs> but this is no ordinary mechanical doll. True, it has a wind-up key like any other, and beady glass eyes, and a head that darts this way and that like a chicken's. But once you wind it up, it will go forever. So fast, in fact, that it can be everywhere, see everything at once. Any misstep, any wrong move, any broken rule, it knows, even before you do expressly designed for that corporate look, from its tailored suit down to its high-heeled pumps. When you hear those stilettos spiking the hallways, staccato-like, you may momentarily forget you're in a school. <laughs> and remember, you won't know precisely where it will land, for it will be everywhere at once. Its face, although somewhat pinched, is slightly weathered to give the impression of a seasoned professional its pursed lips have a perpetual smile, and it even speaks. Remember, this is no ordinary mechanical doll. Its voice is evenly modulated to belie not a trace of emotion as it obeys your every command. To a probationary teacher, should it say, you're fired. One might think it said, you're hired. Such a pleasant, composed demeanor does it have. Don't be fooled by its knowing look, though. 
If you ask it a question, its reply will sound like double talk. Warning, this mechanical doll knows no class distinction. So beware administrators, should you take one of those three hour lunch breaks to have your nails manicured or engage in a post observation conference in your office with a fledgling and be caught with your pants down, it will do you in too, with a smile, of course. <laughs> This is another poem on the theme of the death of one's father. At Padajito, which is Bengali for the unvanquished, after the 1956 Bengali film by Sajit 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 Ray. 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 Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Dawn breaks in the temple city of Varanasi all the night long. Sadhbajaya mopped the brow of her husband, Hadihar. All the night long, she fanned his brow, held water to his parched lips. Now, with every gasp for breath, Hadihar breathed out a moan, a moan that reminds him he still lives. Apu, she urges her son, here is a brass pitcher. Go to the river Ganges and fill it with holy water and come fast. Apu hurdles down the 84 stone steps, the 84 ghats, to the bank of the river Ganges. Temple, bo temple bells toll the air in the mist of half-light between night and day. In the mist of half-light, Apu dips the brass pitcher into the flow. His 10-year-old legs climb the 84 ghats. His 10-year-old hands tend the pitcher of holy water. Sadhbajaya lifts the head of Hadihar, her beloved husband. His eyes open, and with one moan, his parched lips sip the holy water. In a moment, Hadihar's head jerks into silence, eyes glazed back. In a moment, the earth shifts. In a moment, 84 blackbirds wail across the Aurorian sky. Wow. This poem is set in winter and was inspired by a homeless person I witnessed one frigid December night not too far from here. <clears throat> when red leaves turn to ice, what brought this lumpen sack of black to fold in, bend to Third Avenue pavement, frozen in prayer? The gray windows stare in wonder at the black sack frozen at an angle. Bend to Third Avenue pavement, frozen in prayer, his black coat melded to pavement the December night. The black sack frozen at an angle, was he there? when red leaves turned to ice? His black coat melded to pavement the December night. Will he still be there? Was he there when red leaves turned to ice? When ice melts to green? Will he still be there? The gray windows stare in wonder. When ice melts to green? What brought this lumpen sack of black to fold in? For you formalists out there, that was a pantoon. <laughs> the Glass Unicorn. She sank frozen in a cocoon, frail arms trembling, slicing the air. She wore lavender silk for him, the gentleman caller, and when he called, barely did she trudge across the floor, clubfoot dragging its weight to the door. You must be Laura, he said. Eyes lowered, she nodded. His kind voice poked the walls of her cocoon. Surely there must be one thing you care for. Yes, there is one thing. Her pure high voice broke a din 
of silence. She held a glass unicorn in her delicate hand. See how the moonlight shines through, she whispered, no longer trembling. Blue roses, he named her. He saw her eyes were moons and summoned her to dance. But I cannot dance, for the clubfoot would shame her. She slowly, slowly succumbed to his arms to follow his lead, shed her cocoon, and together they took flight. He blessed her with his kiss. Was she redeemed? Blue roses, you are different from the others, she heard him say, but I am beholden to another. The walls of the cocoon thundered. She stared down, down into dark, his footsteps trailing out the door, saw the glass unicorn still glinting in the moonlight. Okay, three short poems. This poem is an homage to a certain bird which does not migrate south but bears out our cold winters. The Herald Above the Reeds. Red-winged blackbird, let me hear your call. Herald spring while the snow still falls. Black as pitch, flame orange shoulders, perch on tall grasses and stark leafless branches. Red-winged blackbird, let me hear your call. High above New York bleak winter marshes. Conqueree, conqueree, trails off and settles over the reeds, embodies an ancient tone of spring. No trace of line. Twilight falls, someone's playing an accordion. Its doleful tones float the lilt of wind tenderly as the bedroom curtains flutter by golden air. She sits without stirring. Its doleful tones float the lilt of wind, peering at his golden face, no trace of line by golden air. She sits without stirring. She thinks there is no time. Peering at his golden face, no trace of line, only deep pools of night. She thinks there is no time, only long golden days, only deep pools of night. Tenderly, as the bedroom curtains flutter, only long golden days. Twilight falls, someone's playing an accordion. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for listening. The Lads of Larn for Dylan Thomas upon the centenary of his birth. Larn, curious Larn, you remain alone. No lines connect. Where cocklers still leave stone damp flats at dawn to dig for cockles in the silted sand, silt the late moon discloses to tug the river Tav away, away from heron priested shore and dissolve in sky, sky so big, the clouds spill in upon the river. Larn, dreaming Larn, gulls glide down your distant green, trail shrill notes that pierce blue air. Do you hear or do you dream? of limb-weary Welsh lads carousing your pubs, heavy days soot-spent, heaving coal from river barge. Oh, Larn, do you still dream of the poet in the boathouse, perched there on the cliff? Wow.